We will hope that doesn't fall on the computer. Can you guys hear me okay? I tend to move a little bit, so um, I will try to move this up. All right, so one of my favorite TV shows is The West Wing. Has anybody not seen The West Wing? Okay, a few of you. All right, so um, The West Wing chronicles uh, the life of a lot of senior officials in the White House along with the president. Um, because I originally had this as like a 45 minute uh, presentation, I'm gonna skip over a intro video uh, that just kind of talked a little bit about them um, and introduce you to the cast. So this is the cast. I'm sure you've recognized some of these, these folks in various um, other, other things that they've played, uh, but I want to introduce you to them now. So uh, right here is the president. That's Josiah, uh, President Josiah Bartlett, uh, or Jed for short. Um, he's the president. We all know what the president does, uh, although these days we might not know what he does, but we'll, we'll forego this, this current administration for a while. Um, this guy right here, that is the uh, chief of staff, Leo McGarry. Uh, so Leo's main job is to staff the president on a daily basis. So um, he's essentially the right-hand man. You have to go through him in order to get to um, the president. Uh, back behind uh, everybody is Josh Lyman. Um, this is also the character that uh, a few of my friends say that that's who, who I would be if, if I was um, uh, making friends out of this group. He is the deputy chief of staff. And what Josh's is responsibility is for is to staff the president when Leo's out um, and, and isn't around, um, but also to have uh, one of the most senior advisors on, on a number of key policy issues. And so, so he, is, he is always making decisions um, uh, in, in throughout the season, uh, in throughout the series rather, of, of different issues that they take on. Um, kind of in, in front and in the middle is Sam Seaborn. He is the Deputy Communications Director. Like Sam, he has a boss, uh, that's Toby over here. Uh, we'll touch on him in a second. Um, Sam's responsibility mainly is speech writing. So all the State of the Union addresses, uh, election um, speeches, things like that, that's what Sam really uh, took pride in and that's what he wrote. Um, he also does do uh, some, some issues and, and takes point on some of the issues. Um, we'll go to Toby next. Toby is the uh, communications director. He is responsible for um, putting forth the message uh, of, of the uh, administration. Um, CJ Craig or Claudia Jean Craig is the press secretary. She's responsibility is to talk to the public and, and be kind of the public face of the um, administration. We're gonna skip um, her. Uh, she's no, nowhere near relevant in this picture. Um, but everybody else in the story has something. So that's why um, when you try to find it, she was only in the one season. She was an um, ex-girlfriend of uh, Josh Lyman and she was on the campaign. So she she's like kind of started out the season and then they kicked her off promptly after season one. So, um, so the rest of the time, what I want to do is, is I want to spend um, uh, a little bit of time talking about an issue that they had um, started to, to, to talk about while they were uh, in the middle of re-electing uh, the president and how that relates to us as we think about, uh, excuse me, building products. Um, so before I get started, I kind of have to kind of set the stage. So, um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm also coming down with a cold, I guess. Uh, so uh, at this point in time, um, and let me, let me skip back to these guys. So one thing that we didn't um, learn until a little bit into the series is that the president actually has multiple sclerosis and he hid it from um, the electorate, he hid it from everybody, right? And he got elected and now all of a sudden um, he had just came out letting everybody know, hey, I have multiple sclerosis, um, I wasn't trying to hide it, I, was just, I just never told anybody. Um, and so, so there's a, a whirlwind of, of, you know, betrayal, distrust, all sorts of things going on in the administration, but also inside of, of the uh, country, right? You know, you're the top person has just told everybody that he's lied to them for, for several um, years. Uh, so we, we fast forward uh, a little bit and um, they, they hit their State of the Union uh, address with a bang um, and we'll talk about that State of the Union address a little bit at the end if we have some time. Um, and then, and then uh, what are, where our story picks up is um, if you want to follow along and actually go watch the story because these are all on Netflix, um, it's season four uh, during the re-election campaign. And so um, 
uh, the president gets checked every day for blood pressure. Um, and, and depending on his day of blood pressure uh, and what, what it's at will depend on if Toby can actually be near him. And so they're out in Indiana, rural Indiana, giving a speech, uh, giving one of, the, one of the many campaign speeches you give. And um, the, the scene enters uh, Toby frantically just walking back and forth, right? He's pacing because the president's out there giving a, a, an address, a speech that he wrote. And he can't be anywhere near the president. It's, it's a bad day for him to be near the president. And so he's out here doing that. And, and, and meanwhile, Josh is out talking to um, the land or, landowner's daughter about some renewable energy options um, and, and some, some car that they built that works on uh, corn uh, and, and, and oil, corn oil. And so as, as uh, this kind of thing goes on for a little bit, you get out to a point where Donna, um, who, who's not pictured up here, um, is Josh's secretary. And she says, hey, guys, we got to go. Um, the, the, the president's wrapping up. And as they, they start to walk through this area, they look at the podium, and there's no president to be found. Not just the fact that there's no president, there's also no motorcade. The motorcade's their ride, right? And, and they, they are like, hey, where's the motorcade, right? They see these people walking back, and they're asking, where, where, where's the motorcade? And they, they turn around after somebody points, and out in a distance, over a field, uh, you see the road and the motorcade just going away. And now they're like, wait, how, we got to get back to DC, and we're in rural Indiana. How are we going to get back there? Um, they, didn't leave a, they didn't leave an extra car, so they don't have another way to get back. So they are lost for, for all sake. Uh, they are lost and not able to catch up with who they need to be with. So this is over two episodes, and it goes fast. Um, where our story picks up, though, um, and how it relates to products is um, they've, they've finally got a, a plane, and they are in a, a hotel. They have a few hours um, to, to just kind of kill. And so they're, they're talking amongst the, the three, Josh, uh, Toby, and uh, Donna, about you know, what they're going to do when they get back uh, to DC. And um, Toby decides he's going to go get another drink from the bar. And so as he gets up, to, to up there, um, he meets this guy, Matt Kelly. And Matt Kelly is, is on a trip uh, to visit Notre Dame with his daughter. His daughter um, is going to school next year, and, and that was one of the options that she wanted to go to. And, and so they're, they're having this conversation of, of mutual funds and of um, how the market did. And, and unfortunately, Matt had lost a, a, lot of, a significant amount of money um, on his mutual funds in, in the market that day. And so he's, he's really distraught and trying to figure out how is he going to pay for college for his daughter. He makes $55,000 a year. Um, his wife brings in another twenty-five, dollars and, and roughly um, education at that time was like $34,000 a year. So he, he really doesn't know how he's going to be able to afford to send his daughter to school. But he wants to. He wants to be able to afford this. And, and, and Toby, you can see in the scene, Toby has a, 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 like a, a light bulb above his head. And, and as you, they, they pan out, all of a sudden you see uh, Josh on the other side. He was also getting a drink. And they, they asked to talk. Um, and that's really the first point of, of building products is, uh, is an idea, right? It starts with an idea. The idea that Toby had was, how can we make education cheaper? How can we get it cheaper so that um, you know, that, that anybody could afford it. And that's, that's the idea that they have. And, and all of our ideas start out that the same way, right? We, we encounter a problem, and we think, how can we, what can we do to fix it? Um, and so the, the next part, and, and I, don't, I don't spend a lot of time talking about that idea, um, other than to, to, to paint the picture of the back, back side of um, our, our West Wing story, um, is after you've created your idea, before you go and build it, before you go and build the solution, what does that end state look like? Or what does that value proposition look like? Um, and so we, we're going to continue our story with the West Wing. So, so they, they get back into uh, DC. They have a few hours off. And um, as they're getting back into the office, uh, you see Toby and uh, Josh talking. And, and they're really passionately talking about this, this idea. And, and they come 
uh, Josh comes out and says something about uh, CEOs getting bonuses and those bonuses are tax deductible and so in, in large corporate America they're, they're getting tax deducti deducted bonuses that, that we could do something about um, to, to, to offer some sort of a, a tax break for everybody else. And uh, Toby pulls out his paper um, that he was reading on his way in and he said, hey, I was going to talk to you about the same thing, and it is make education cheaper, right? And so they've, they've developed this idea. They've, they've, they've said, hey, we want to figure out a way to make, um, make education in, in America cheaper. And so as we think about products, we, we have that, that problem, right? And so we, once we've identified that problem, um, we, we start to, to talk about it, right? We start to talk about it to other people. Hey, do you have that problem too? Are you encountering this problem to, to see? Is, it, is there some valid piece there? Um, so, so in thinking about value proposition, we're going to go into value proposition now. Um, uh, Steve Jobs had a quote once uh, that I think is, is, is uh, spot on here. Um, it's too small in here. So uh, people think... Uh, focus means saying yes to all the things you've got to focus on, but that's not what it means at all. It means saying no to the hundred other ideas that are out there. You have to pick carefully. I'm actually as proud of the things we haven't done as the things I have done. Innovation is saying no to a thousand things. I think that that really speaks as we look at when we, when we have an idea, an idea may be good, but does it, does it actually require us building something and producing something, some sort of a product? Um, and so that's where, where it fits in terms of our value proposition. As we think about our value proposition, um, does anybody know, actually, does anybody not know what a value proposition is? Okay, so we'll, we'll cover that really quick. So a value proposition is, um, it's a headline, right? It's some sort of an attention grabber. Um, it's a short sentence. It could mention the product, maybe it doesn't. Um, there's, there's two to three uh, sentences in a subheadline, or maybe a paragraph, and, a, and a, a three bullets and a visual. Doesn't always have to have all of four of those things, but but somewhere along there it's going to. Um, so let's let's look at examples of of good value proposition, um, because I think that that'll help us understand what that looks like. Uh, so here is there it goes. Uh, here's campaign monitor. Um, and their, their value proposition is send email uh, your customers can't ignore. Easy to use, professional grade email marketing and automation for today's fast growing businesses. And in the background, they, this GIF is way too fast, but you can start to see um, some things. Now when you're looking and you're determining what makes a good value proposition, I really have four uh, questions um, for, for you to think about. Um, and, and we can do it right through this one, is, is what is uh, your product uh, or service that the company is selling. So we, we've identified the company. I've, I've given that to you as campaign monitor. Um, does anybody anybody get what they're selling from here? Email. Email. Okay. Um, I, I like to, to look at it as um, it's kind of hard, harder to read here, but it's professional grade email marketing um, that's e that's easy to use. That, that's kind of where I think of that. Um, the end benefit uh, is my second question, and that's really the easy to use piece. Um, the third is, is uh, who is your target customer for, um, for this product or service? And as you're thinking about this, um, I notice the videos in the background, and I apologize, it's too fast. Um, it seems to be anybody, right? There, there's a, there was a person walking um, with headphones. There was a, uh, another guy that was kind of scrolling through something right here. Um, and, and it highlights at the end, it says, today's fast-growing businesses. Um, and that's, that's really what that means to me, is that the, the target audience is, is somebody that's got a business and that they're trying to grow um, in today. Um, now what makes their uh, offering unique or different is my, my fourth question. Um, and, and I go back to the, the top one, is send email your customers can't ignore. I think that's, that's their kind of differentiator and what makes them unique. Um, so let's look at one that's, that's applicable to um, uh, our space a little bit. Uh, WP 101. So it's, it's learn WordPress the easy way. Uh, who's got time to waste on boring tech books? Tired of homemade videos filled with oohs and ums or confusing tech jargon? Ready to finally learn how to use WordPress to create your own website today? 
Um, so if we look at those four questions today, what's the product or service? They're selling some sort of videos. Um, I picked out professional videos because they, they said homemade videos. Um, I can also see in the background that there's a small computer right here and people kind of all around looking at it. Um, their end benefit is, is learn WordPress the easy way, so apparently there must be a hard way um, because th they're, they're claiming to have an easy way. Um, your target audience is, is really anybody that doesn't know WordPress, so um, that, that's cool because there's a lot of people out there that don't know WordPress. Um, and what makes their offering unique and different? It, it's really, I, I go back to the homemade videos with ooms and ahs and confusing check, tech jargon, excuse me. Um, I think of that as, as, okay, so they're gonna have some sort of a professional video. Now I know Sean behind WP 101 and they are very professional um, and so they're, they're great for uh, clients to have. Um, due to time, I'm gonna skip over Optin Monster, but the, the same idea, right, is you can look at um, their piece, uh, their, their, their value prop here, and then they have some sort of a supporting video. All right, so uh, the next step um, in our story, uh, we're gonna go back to the West Wing for a second, is um, uh, Josh and uh, Toby still have this idea, that, and they've, they've formed some, of, some value proposition. Their value proposition we're using is, is make education cheaper. Um, they start talking to Leo and CJ and Sam and even Donna, trying to figure out, hey, um, you know, is, is, there, is there, what do we need to consider as we're, we're looking at this? And so uh, the, 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 this phase or, or this point of, of the, the story ends with um, them going to the president. Leo, Leo took it to the president. Leo said, you know, hey, this is what they want to do. We want to make this a big thing as part of our, our re-election campaign. Um, are we good? And at that point, the president says, yep, let's ship it out to the treasury and, and a few other areas in, in the government. And, and what this, this part or, or this piece of the story highlights is what we call a, a minimum viable product. Um, a minimum viable product is first and foremost the, um, uh, what I like to call the race to deliver customer value first. As you're, as you're developing a product, you don't want to spend a lot of time on it. Um, because you, you want to get it out in, in the hands of, of customers that are going to look at buying it and then see if it's got any merit. Um, the, the like official uh, title of, of a minimum viable product or, or definition rather is a minimum viable product is the version um, of a new product that allows your team to collect the maximum amount of validated learning about your customers um, with the least amount of effort. So, so that doesn't necessarily mean, hey, um, I, can, I can cut some code quality or I can cut some testing in your code. You still want to have good quality code. You still want to have um, you know, your, your whatever process that you have there. If you're writing code or if you're building a uh, course, you still want to take the time to make it look good and, and, and be well received, but you also want to get it there as quick as possible. Um, so I'm going to skip over. Um, this guy, because I want to talk about um, uh, a, a software example for us, um, because the, the West Wing example is great, but what does that look like in terms of software? So um, how many people have used um, Unsplash? Okay, so Unsplash, uh, for those that, that don't know what it is, is, is it's a free photography site. Um, what, what they decided was uh, or what problem they were trying to face was um, iStock photography, Adobe Photos, um, any other place that you can get stock photography was expensive and it typically was low quality, uh, meaning it was very generic and, and wasn't um, as, as nice. And so what they, they kind of came up with was, hey, we don't like that and we bet other people don't like that either, so let's try to figure out a way to, to build something. Um, so rather than spending weeks or months um, creating a website that, that could be a flop, uh, they went the cheapest route possible. Um, and, and by cheapest route possible, they started on Tumblr. Uh, so, so Tumblr's free, right? So it's kind of like a, this micro-blogging uh, service. They paid for a $20 theme, and they um, had uploaded uh, and worked with a local designer, uh, or sorry, a, a local photographer to take 10 high-res photos. They, they literally went to a coffee shop, took 10 photos, 
and, and said, we're going to upload these, and, and we're going to see what happens. And so what they came up with was these 10 photos. So the, the, there's one photo in the background, but they're, they're, those were the photos they came up with. And they said, okay, we're going to upload these photos, and we're going to um, see what happens, right? So if we, if we look at that, that, M, uh, that MVP, though, um, it, here's the important things to take away from it, right? They, they took three hours to build their MVP. They didn't, they didn't spend an enormous amount of time. They didn't go and spin up a WordPress site. They didn't go and find a WordPress theme. They didn't go find hosting. They, they went to Tumblr, right? And, and they said, hey, let's just see if it works. They even uploaded the photos to their Dropbox account. Um, and and I'll, I'll tell you about their Dropbox account um, in a little bit. Um, but, but they were like, hey, this is something that we think that we can solve. Let's work with our local photographer friends, see what we can do. Um, so they did that, and what they, what they found um, was they actually posted this over to Hacker News. They, um, within the first few hours, up, uh, they had 20,000 photos downloaded, so, so each one of uh, the previous photos were downloaded 20,000 times. It broke their Dropbox account. People weren't able to, to, to download them anymore, but, but they felt that that was validated, right? And if you, if you look at Unsplash today, um, over 2 million photos are downloaded a month, and there's, there's tons of photos. Um, most of the photos in the rest of the deck are from Unsplash, simply because they're free, they're widely available, um, and it was easy to, to download and incorporate. Um, so knowing what to build, right? When you, when you think about that MVP uh, of your product is that you want to know what to build. Um, so real quick, when I look at, at knowing what to build, I think of these three things. Uh, keep it simple. Uh, keep it small, um, keep iterating because you're going to eventually solve for the bigger problem that you have, but, but what is the, the smallest amount of, of features in, in your product, in your course, in your ebook that you can, you can do to validate um, that, that this is a problem worth solving. And then uh, constantly communicate to the, the people that are, are buying your product uh, to say, hey, here's the vision of our product, this is where we're going to go, we're not there yet. Um, but but we're, we're getting there each and every way. Um, so, so the president has, has been reelected, and uh, they start working with Congress uh, to, to get it passed, to get the, uh, the uh, they actually have to make tax code changes to get it passed. Um, and what we see in, in our video is uh, Josh and Toby um, working separately with, with different uh, organizations and different uh, people, and um, they were told, don't promise anything to anybody. Don't say, hey, we'll give you this for that, because in, in the government, it's, it's, you know, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. And so what they, what they end up doing is they come together and they say, hey, uh, I had to promise this to, to these, this group, and, and Toby's over here saying, hey, Josh, I can't promise that because I promised this, and, and, and so they're in a, in a mess. Um, and, that's, and that's really what product fit is about. And so product fit is our third um, stage when we think about building products, and that's that's where if you ever hear anybody say, oh, you're seeing exponential growth or you're seeing hockey stick growth, that, that is when you've found, um, you've, you've found what works and you, and you, you, you see kind of a, a stagnant upward line and all of a sudden you go way up, right? That's, that's product market fit. Um, and and uh, I'm going to touch on this. Um, so Mark Anderson is, is the guy that kind of coined product market fit, and, and it simply means being in a good market um, with a product that can satisfy that market. So you've, you've identified all your customer needs and your issues, um, and, and you've, you've found that. And you're always going to, you're going to do something, and then you're going to come back to, to product market fit. This isn't a, a step one, step two, step three pro, uh, process, right? These are all iterative. Um, and so, so I'm going to, to skip this one and go to, to the last section, which is, which is getting customer feedback. Um, once you've shipped out your, your MVP and you, you've kind of found some sort of a product market fit, the next thing that you want to do is you want to find uh, some sort of customer feedback. So there's five ways um, to get customer feedback. Uh, surveys, feedback boxes, reaching out directly, uh, user activity, and usability tests. Um, how many people have used surveys to like survey your audience or um, your products or that kind of stuff? Okay, so I'm going to skip those. I think we all understand those um, using SurveyMonkey, things like that. Um, 
The, the next one is feedback boxes. So has anybody used feedback boxes? Few? OK, so if you haven't used feedback boxes, it looks like this guy on a website, so I just took a small screenshot of it. But what these are, are allowing you to do is, as somebody is, is viewing your site um, or, or your product, um, if they notice something, maybe they notice a, a, a word that was misspelled or um, something wasn't clear to them, if they see this feedback box, they can click it, they can fill out a form, and they can give you feedback. Um, chances are they're going to give you that feedback um, because they see this. If they're not going to go to your support team. They're not going to go and find any official way to give you feedback because it's just little nuances that, that they're seeing. And so feedback boxes are a great way to do that. Um, the, the third way is reaching out directly. Um, this is the way that I think about the most, and that's, that's finding um, your customers. So if you have a customer database, you can go through it. If you're going to be in an area or they're local to you, ask them to go to dinner. Um, ask them to um, get on a phone call, um, but reach out directly because customers love to give you feedback. Um, and and I, I'm on at least a customer call a week um, getting feedback from, from our customers. Um, another way, which is the fourth way, is uh, user activity from your analytics. So if you're, uh, if you're Product is web-based, so somebody's going to your website to access it. You already have Google Analytics installed, so you can start to look through those analytics. Um, I prefer Heap Analytics. It gives you um, a much better uh, configuration up front, and then you can ask questions later because it's just going to grab a bunch of data, and then it's going to say, um, you know, three months later, I want to know about something. I didn't have to set it up. Google Analytics requires you to set up all the things at the beginning, uh, where Heap is just like, here, just give us the data, and you can ask your questions later. Um, so you can use your analytics. You can find trends. You can find groups and segments of people, and then you can, then you can further uh, work with them, right? You could send out a survey. You could reach out to that group because you're working on a, a specific feature or a specific um, solution to, to a problem. Um, and, and I left already with that one. So uh, the last one is usability tests. Um, has anybody ever been like contacted e either from, from the web or in an email to, to run a usability test? No. OK, so usability tests are actually the, the like, least popular, um, especially in the WordPress space. Um, but the, the, the WordPress design team is, is doing more and more usability tests. They, did, they ran some at. Uh, WooConf um, back in October, and then they ran some at, at WordCamp US um, back in December. But um, for a long time, usability tests would require you to go and hire outside people um, and have them pay hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to put together these tests um, to watch your users uh, work on your website, hit, hit something, um, you know, download your product, do, do specific tasks. And today, we can use something called usertesting.com. Um, and, and it's like 39 bucks. Um, and we can have them, uh, we give them a step-by-step -step process of what we want them to do. So do this, do this, do that, and, and go complete. So if you're, if you're doing a checkout process or you're building a sign-up process, um, you, could, you could run usability tests on that. The great thing about usability tests is that the other four options uh, of, of getting customer feedback um, are going to help you with is it gets you to, to like look right over the shoulder of a customer um, and have them, or, or even a visitor, um, and have uh, exactly what's going on. They're, they're going to talk through each step. OK, well, I think I should click on this. Let me click on that. Oh, that didn't work. Let me go back. Right? These are the types of, of things that you only get when you have a chance to sit down with your customer. Um, so, so usability tests. Um, are, are extremely helpful. Um, I've got like two minutes uh, left, so um, I just want to wrap it up with, with this. Um, once, once something gets passed, and the education stuff did get passed, um, President Bartlett would always end everything with a, what's next? Uh, what, what is next for you? Hopefully this has, has given you a framework uh, to go back and, and, and take your idea from idea to product. Thank you. Um, I'm AJ. Um, product manager, you can follow me at AJ Morris. Thanks. I'm on the button. I think we have one, one time for one question. Yeah. Nope. Okay.